In this video, we're going to look at how to import data from PDFs into Microsoft Excel. First of all, we're going to look at importing one of many tables within a PDF. We'll look at three different methods. So first of all, we'll look at a method that will work pretty much for everyone, bringing the data into Word and then from Word into Excel. We'll also look at how to do this using Power Query. Secondly, we'll import tables that span across more than one page within a PDF and we'll do that using Power Query. We'll also look at how to refresh your data in Excel if the PDF gets updated. We'll also look at how to import multiple PDFs within the same folder and how to refresh the data if more PDFs are added to that same folder. Now I will leave a table of contents in the description of this video to help you navigate to the relevant part of it. But enough of the intro, let's get going. So we're gonna start off with a PDF that has multiple tables and we want to import one of them. So you've probably arrived at this video because you've tried to do this by literally copying and pasting data from a PDF into Excel. And you can see it doesn't do it very well at all. However, if I try and do this in Word, let's paste it in here, because it does a much better job. And then if I copy it from Word, back into Excel, you can see that it does retain that table structure. So if it's a very simple table that you're copying and pasting over into Excel, that's probably the way to go. Now I'm just gonna minimize Excel, bring Word back on the scene. If the previous method doesn't work and you still want to use Word to import your data into Excel, your other option is to try and open the PDF within Word. To do that, if you could file open, Navigate to your PDF and open. You get a message saying that Word will now convert your PDF into an editable Word document. If I click on OK. I now have a document as a Word document. So I can take my table and copy it. If I bring Excel back on the screen, I should then be able to paste into Excel. For a simple import task, I would probably use this method, but if you want the data in Excel to automatically update, so if the quarterly report updates, then you'll need to use Power Query to do your import. The rest of the video is gonna look at how to use Power Query to import PDF data into Excel. So I'll start on a new sheet, and we're going to try and import that same table within that PDF into Excel using Power Query. To do that, you go up to the Data tab on your ribbon, go to Get Data, From File, From PDF, and navigate to your PDF. Here you can see a list of the tables and the pages within your PDF. Table one is the one we want to import. I could also import table two. Page one will show you all the data on that page and the same for page two. Well, I want to import table one. Now for this data, I can look at the preview and see it looks absolutely fine in terms of importing. So all I need to do is click on load down here and it imports the data into a table. Now you can see here that it's not applied the percentage format to column D and it's not applied currency formatting to the quarter values. So all I need to do is apply a little bit of formatting. And I'm good to go. So now we're going to look at importing a table within a PDF that spans multiple pages. So here I have some transaction data. You can see that it goes over more than one page. How do I import this whole table as one table into Excel. Well, I'm back in Excel and I'll go back to data, get data from file, from PDF. I select my sales data PDF, import it. You can see here that Excel has recognized that although this table goes across more than one page, it is in fact the same table. Now I did have column headings at the top of each page within the PDF, but if I click on load, you 
can see if I scroll down this table, it hasn't repeated the column headings anywhere in my data. If I have a look at the table though, you can see that I have a rogue column here. I've got revenue, which just contains a whole load of currency symbols, and then the actual value in a separate column. So I do need to do a little bit of tidying up here. To do that, I pick my query here, right click and edit. If I scroll over, I can see the problem here. I can actually get rid of the revenue column. If I right click and remove, then call this revenue and change its format to currency. And I can do that just by clicking on this little button here, one, two, three, choosing currency. And then if I click on this button up here, close and load, you can see now it's got rid of that row column. Now I could do some clever things with the data. Maybe I wanted the brand name, which is included in the product description, to be displayed in a separate column. I'm gonna edit my query again, right click edit. I'm gonna select my product column. I'm gonna to go to split column, this is on the home tab by delimiter, and my delimiter is actually space dash space. If I click on OK, you can see now it's created two columns. This one I can call brand, and this one I can call product name. To keep things tidy, I might also rename my query. I'll call this sales data import, and then I'm gonna close and load. And now you can see I have a brand column and a product name column. Now at the moment, our transaction data takes us up to the end of September. But what if we receive a new PDF that includes the previous transactions that take us up to September, but also include transactions for October? Now I'm going to save this PDF over the file that we previously imported our data from, sales data. I'm gonna go back into Excel, and now I'm going to refresh my query. So I'm gonna click on this little refresh button. Now, if I scroll to the bottom of my table, you can see that it includes those October records. So as long as you save the new version of the PDF in the same place, the old PDF, the same file name, Power Query will automatically pick up the new records within that PDF. So next scenario, we have the sales data in separate PDFs. It's the same sales data that we were looking at before, but we've received the data in separate files. Now I've put all of these PDFs in the same folder. Let's see how we can import the data into Excel in this scenario. Back in Excel, I go to Data, Get Data, from file, from folder. Navigate to my PDFs folder. Now I won't see the actual PDFs when I navigate to the folder. The point here is you're selecting the folder, not a particular PDF. Once you've navigated to that folder, just click on open. And it'll give you a list there of all the files that is found in that folder. Down here, you'll see a combine button. Now we're gonna to go to combine and transform data it's likely that we're going to need to make some changes to the data before we load it into Excel. It's showing a sample file here, first file, but here's my table and here's my page. Not a lot of difference between the two. It's the table I'm wanting to import. And if I look at the preview, you can see I've got the same problem as before where revenue is split across two columns. So I'm going to need to change that eventually. I'll click on OK. Let's fix that problem with the revenue column. So I right click on revenue, remove, call this one revenue, and change this to currency. I'm gonna call this query sales data from folder. And let's see what happens if I load it into Excel. I'm just gonna click on close and load. 
Now, the first thing I've noticed is I've got this extra column called source.name. I don't really want that. Let's fix my revenue column problem. Let's scroll down a little bit. So you can see that it's made a pretty good job of it. Nothing that I really need to change apart from getting rid of this column. I need to edit the query. If I right click on the query down here, I get edit. I'm going to right click and remove that source.name column and close and load. The only other thing I might want to do here is just sort the transaction IDs. Now back in my sales data folder, I'm going to paste in the October records. And now I want to include the records in October within my Excel import. I'm back in Excel and I'm going to refresh my query. Now if I scroll to the bottom of the table, you can see it includes the October records. So as long as you place the PDF within the folder that you've specified for your query, it will always update with data from those new PDFs. Now, the last thing we want to do here is to exclude the refund transactions. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the query and go to edit. Scroll over to the returned column and I'm going to filter out the refund transactions, close and load. And you can see that those records are no longer imported into Excel. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe and give me a like and I'll see you next video.